So the focus tonight, of course, is on Thanksgiving or the topic of giving thanks, and that's what our focus is going to be here for our uh, short Bible study and then also for our corporate time of prayer. And I don't want anybody to be embarrassed. Some people are not very comfortable praying out loud, so nobody's going to be put on the spot. Uh, What we'll do is we'll gather together in groups of three or four or five, I mean, however many you want to get together with, but, but at least let's try and get in groups of three or four, uh, and then whoever wants to pray can pray, and whoever wants to just pray in agreement quietly, they can do that as well. Um, and then again, the folks at home can pray during that time with a focus on giving thanks to God. We usually come to God with our list of requests. We come to God with our our list of petitions and our supplications. That's typically why we pray is because we want things answered from God and we come to him with our prayer list. Even if we're praying for good things for other people, not just for ourselves, uh, we still very often focus on our supplications rather than on being thankful to God in prayer. And it is important that we remember uh, to thank God every day for for really for everything that he has done for us everything he has given to us and i've entitled this short devotional in all things give thanks this thanksgiving eve so i want to start in philippians chapter 4 if you have your bibles you're welcome to open up there with me and we're going to read verses 6 and 7 as we get into the study tonight philippians chapter 4 In verse 6, says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So we're told to be anxious for nothing, and we are told in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So in everything, we are to give thanks. We don't necessarily give thanks for everything. We may suffer terrible losses. There may be terrible things that we experience in life because this is not yet heaven. And uh, really the devil is still uh, the ruler of this world because man is really disobeying God and not living in obedience to God's will on the earth. And so there's a lot of bad things that happen. And we can't give thanks for the bad things, but we can give thanks in all things because the scriptures command us that we are to give thanks in all things and to, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving in all things, bring our requests to God. So in all things, give thanks. And we have so much to be thankful for. Number one, Uh, We have the gift of life, and life is a gift, and we sometimes may think life is hard, and maybe we think that life's not fair, Uh, but the reality is is that life is a gift, and we're not promised tomorrow. We weren't even promised life. Uh, God gave us life. He used our human parents to bring us into this world uh, through the act of procreation, and, and here we are, and it is a gift from God. Every day is a gift from God. Every moment is a gift from God, and so we ought to be thankful for our very lives. Uh, We ought to be thankful for our salvation, that we have eternal life, not just physical life, but we have eternal life and spiritual life through our faith in Jesus Christ. And that is life forever and ever with the Lord. So we should be thankful for our salvation. Uh, We ought to be thankful for our health. We all have the health to be here tonight. We're all able to get up out of bed and and shower and shave and get dressed and, and, and get in a car and get a ride to church or drive ourselves to church, and we have a beautiful church building here where we're able to come. Uh, And so we're thankful that God has given us the health and the ability uh, to live life and to get out of bed every morning and to live the life that he has given to us. Our health, uh, even if we're in poor health, we could still thank God for uh, the things that are right with us uh, and, and bring our petitions to him for the things that we would ask him to heal in us. But we all should be thankful for our health. Uh, we all have our families to be thankful for. And whether your family is just two of you or whether there's 25 of you, 
Uh, some people come from big families, some people very small families, but we all have families. We all have uh, parents. We all have siblings. We all have, you know, uh, cousins, and, and, and some of us have children and grandchildren, and so we could be thankful for our families. Our families are a gift from God to us, and we are a gift to them in our homes uh, and in our families. And then fifthly, we can be thankful for our church. Uh, There's a lot of people that don't have a church building to meet in around the world tonight. Uh, There are many people who don't have a good church home, and maybe uh, they are uh, shut in. Maybe they are invalid, and they can't come to church with us, or perhaps there's just not a good Bible-teaching church in their country or in their city. Uh, And so we are blessed to have a great church, Calvary Chapel of Visalia, and a City on a Hill Church in Tehachapi, where we are like-minded believers. We love the Lord. We love to worship the Lord here. We love the Word of God. Uh, and our church family is really a family. It is, it is the family of God, and we should be thankful. We ought to be thankful for our church family. So if you're, if you're wondering what to pray for when we go to prayer time, and you say, well, I can't think of anything to, to be thankful for, I've just given you five things that we can all be thankful for, for our, our lives, for our salvation, for our health, for our families, and for our church. And that's a good start for us to be able to start to thank God here tonight. Uh, during this uh, Thanksgiving Eve service. Now, I want to read a uh, part of a devotional. I read this devotional every day. I've been reading it for years. It's fantastic. It's called The Streams in the Desert uh, by L.B. Coleman. And this, is, uh, th- this has been a, uh, a favorite uh, devotional for over 100 years um, in, in Christian circles. And it, it's, really, it's really encouraging. There's a devotional for every day. Uh, of the year. And so uh, I read this uh, every day and then I reread it every year. And so it's, it's fantastic. And this is a devotional on Thanksgiving on this prayer specifically, uh, Philippians or this passage, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And this is from, um, this is from George Mueller, the famous uh, minister who ran orphanages, orphanage homes and had orphanages throughout uh, Bristol, England for many, many years. And he was a man of tremendous faith and God blessed him tremendously as he served the Lord and he uh, took in orphans there uh, in the uh, 19th century in England and, and took care of a, 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 a orphan children. And uh, this is from George Mueller from the Life of Trust. He says, in everything... Not simply when our house is on fire or when our beloved spouse and children are gravely gravely ill, but even in the smallest matters of life, we are to take everything to God. Little things, very little things, even what the world calls trivial things. Yes, we are to take everything, living all day long in holy fellowship with our Heavenly Father and our precious Lord Jesus, we should develop something of a spiritual instinct, causing us to immediately turn to God when a concern keeps us awake at night. During those sleepless nights, we should speak to Him, bringing our various concerns before Him, no matter how small they may be. Also, speak to the Lord about any trial you are facing or any difficulties you may have in your family or professional life. He goes on by prayer and petition, and he says this, earnestly pleading, persevering, and enduring, and waiting, waiting, waiting on God, and then with thanksgiving, always laying a good foundation, even if we have no possessions, there is one thing for which we can always be thankful, that he has saved us from hell. We can also give thanks that he has given us his holy word, his holy spirit, and the most precious gift of all, his son. Therefore, when we consider all this, we have abundant reasons for thanksgiving, and may this be our goal. And so as a result of in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, uh, make our request known to God. Then he says, the peace of God, Philippians 4, 7 which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
This is such a wonderful, genuine, and precious blessing that to truly know it, you must experience it, for it transcends all understanding. And so this is a quote from George Mueller from The Life of Trust uh, pertaining to Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Now verse 8 of Philippians 4 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatever things are, are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And so it's a very encouraging message from the Lord to us tonight that we're not to be anxious or feel fearful for anything. We're to bring our requests with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, bring our requests to God's throne, and the promise is that as we do this, in obedience, then the Lord will bless us with his peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then, he says, to focus on things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are uh, virtuous and praiseworthy, that we are to dwell on those things. And that's partly how we control our, our minds, so our minds don't just start racing in, in fear and trepidation about the future or about what uh, may come and what may not come. Uh, we have the peace of the Lord and we uh, discipline our minds to focus on those things from above and not from below. Now I have a few psalms, a couple of psalms uh, marked out in my Bible that I'm going to read to you. Uh, related to the idea of thanksgiving. Of course, the Psalms are a book of songs that were sung, written as songs to be sung to the Lord. And many of the Psalms uh, have to do with thanksgiving, and many of them have to do with, with prayers and uh, offering sacrifices of thanksgiving to God. For example, we read in Psalm 100 and verse 4, "'Enter into his gates with thanksgiving.'" And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, for his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. And so as we come into the Lord's house and we come into the Lord's presence, we should come into his house with thanksgiving and we should come into his presence with praise and with praises unto the Lord. And we're to be thankful to him, and we are to bless his name. And so we're going to do that in a little bit. We're going to have a time of corporate prayer where we can bring our requests to God, and we could thank him, and we could praise him together uh, as a church family. Remember that Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And so prayer is so important uh, for our church. It's so important for our homes, the family that prays together stays together, and the couple that prays together stays together. It's very true. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom there that we ought to be praying uh, with uh, the members of our household and with one another. In Psalm 106, in verse 47, we read this. Psalm 106, verse 47, the psalmist says, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. And so the psalmist is calling out to God to save us, to save them, those who were praying this prayer to God, crying out to God, Save us, O Lord our God. Gather us from among the Gentiles or among the nations. In other words, gather us to yourself. Save us and gather us to yourself. And then we will give thanks to your holy name and we will triumph in your praise. So we can again be thankful to God for our collective salvation. Individually, we're saved by coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And collectively, as a church, we are a group of saved people, saved believers. 
and we are uh, to cry out to God to save us. And when he saves us, we are to always be thankful that he has gathered us from the nations, from the Gentiles, and gathered us to a group of people unto himself where we are called his treasure. We're called his peculiar people. Uh, he has changed our relationship with himself through Jesus Christ. Now he is our father who art in heaven. Before he was our enemy and we were his enemy before we came to Christ. But now we are adopted into his family as his children. We have a new relationship with him. He is our father. We are his sons and daughters and we ought to be thankful for this because it is a great honor and a great privilege to be called the children of God. Uh, Jesus even said, I call you friends, that we are the friend of God. And what an honor that is to be called the friend of God. In Psalm 106, or 107 rather, this psalm um, uh, it has a refrain and it repeats a couple of the, uh, of the passages over and over again. I'm just going to read a few of these verses uh, here tonight related to Thanksgiving. Psalm 107 in verse 6 says this, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. And so they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And so we ought to be those as God's children who call out to God in our times of trouble, and he will deliver us. He also led them forth by the, by the right way. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the flock. And uh, the good shepherd leads us into green pastures and leads us beside quiet waters. He restores our soul according to Psalm 23. And he leads us on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And uh, we are unrighteous and sinful people, yet he calls us his own. He gives us his Holy Spirit and he leads us into righteous living and righteous paths, uh, which really uh, are a blessing from God. He gives us also uh, satisfaction. Verse 9, he satisfies the longing soul. He satisfies the greatest need of man, which is to have a relationship with his maker. To answer the question, where did I come from? Why am I here? And what happens to me when I die? God comes and he answers all of those questions. And he satisfies the deepest longing uh, of the hearts of men. Uh, really, we can't find satisfaction in anything else in this life other than satisfaction through God because we all have a God-shaped void that only God himself can fill. And he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. And we are to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And we should be those who would be able to say to one another, taste and see the goodness of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good, that we can experience. It's experiential. His living water and uh, his uh, uh, goodness in our lives, actually overflowing out of our lives. Jesus says, uh, I came that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. An overflowing abundance, uh, a blessing and purpose in our lives. We could be thankful for this. Uh, in verse 13, we read, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. The same refrain as earlier. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and he broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in Two. So again, they cried to him in their time of trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. And he brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death. And he broke their chains in pieces. We could be thankful uh, that God has saved us from ourselves. That he has broken the chains that, that bind us and the chains that bound us prior to our salvation. 
those chains of lust to our flesh and addictions and all the other things that uh, caused us to be enslaved to our own fleshly, lustful appetites of our bodies uh, and the uh, slavery of the bondage to the things of this world. So many people are in bondage to their careers or they're in bondage to their hobbies and their recreations. And, you know, they, they, they live and they work uh, uh, to, to just make more money and they're in bondage to all of their debts and all of their bills that they have because they want more and, and, and they end up uh, being possessed by their possessions. And so we have been set free. The chains are broken of slavery, a bondage to, to sin and bondage to our flesh. Jesus came to set the captives free. And Jesus said, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And many of us can testify to that. You're a different person from who you were before you came to Christ than who you are today. And you could say, amen. He has set me free uh, and he has uh, given me uh, a new start in a new life and a new hope. We read uh, in verse 19 of Psalm 107. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 22, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. So again, we see they cried out to the Lord. He saved them in their distress. How? Because he sent his word and he healed them. And so the Lord sends his word and he heals us spiritually. He comes in and he saves us and he forgives us. Uh, he heals the brokenness. He heals the brokenhearted, the scriptures say. And he binds up their wounds. The Lord is so caring and careful to take us. And a lot of us, uh, when we came to Christ, we were like that Humpty Dumpty that fell off the wall. That you know, They look at you and say, who could put the pieces of this person's life back together again? Uh, and yet God does this. Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. But God puts the pieces of broken lives back together. And there's so many examples of this, even just here uh, in this room tonight. That he heals our brokenness. By his stripes we are healed. Jesus came to take the punishment for our sins. So that he could offer us forgiveness and salvation through Jesus Christ. And it's interesting here that he says here in verse 22, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And so, you know, even, you know, exercising the gift of thanks, being thankful to the Lord is a sacrifice that God honors. There's also the scriptures talk about the sacrifice of praise, where you do this even when you don't feel like thanking God. It's a sacrifice to be thankful sometimes, to just try and find something to be thankful for because of all the difficulties you're dealing with. Uh, but it is a sacrifice that God honors. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And then we read in verse 28 of Psalm 107. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet, so he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 32, let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders and so again they cry out to the Lord in their difficulty in their time of trouble the Lord meets them and the Lord delivers them and now he's speaking about he calms the storms so that the waves are still and we know that Jesus is the one who rescues us he is our lifesaver he comes as it were walking on the water across the waves of the storms of our life and we realize we're not alone in the boat we're not going to go down and sink to the bottom Jesus is right there with us Jesus is actually in the boat with us sleeping during our storms uh, you remember that that was uh, one time that the disciples were worried they were going to die and Jesus was just sound asleep underneath the deck and then Jesus he commands that the storms will cease 
in our lives at some point when the storm is over and storms come and they go in our lives. If you're not in a storm right now, you're probably just coming out of a storm. If you're not coming out of a storm right now, you're probably going to go right into a storm next or you're in a storm. I mean, that's just how it is for us in this world. There's storms in this world, in this life. But Jesus is with us in the boat. Jesus is not worried. He doesn't think the ship is going down. Matter of fact, he's perfectly calm asleep on the ship. He's right there with you. And he is the one who calms the sea. He says, be still, and he commands the storm to cease. And storms always come, and then they always go. They don't stay in our lives forever. But even when we're in the storms, he causes us to rise above the storms, even as that eagle on eagle's wings lifted high to where we soar on eagle's wings over the storm uh, and have the peace of God in spite of the storm that's raging all around us. And there's verse 32 says, let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. And so uh, here we are and we are going to praise him uh, tonight through prayer. We spent time praising him here collectively together. We are going to exalt him, continue to exalt him tonight in this place, in the assembly of the people. This is the, the called out ones. We are the ecclesia. We are the church called out from our old lives and called into uh, this family, the family of God as the church. And so we are commanded to exalt him when we are together collectively in the assembly of the people and to praise him in the company of the elders. We also read back in verse 30 that he guides them to their desired haven. He is our guide. He leads us as a father, as a shepherd. Uh, Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He guides us through the light and the illumination of his word, his truth, his wisdom. And then we read in Psalm 109, and this is where we end uh, the study here. Psalm 109 and verse 30 says this, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude. And so as a result of having so much to be thankful for, and we all have so much to be thankful for, to count our blessings really for all that the Lord has done for us, all that he is doing in our lives, as a result, we ought to be those who praise him. That He says, I will praise him greatly with my mouth. I will praise him among the multitude. And so as we are going to break up into groups here momentarily, into groups of three, four, or five, uh, we can also not just uh, be thankful and express thanksgiving for whatever you would want to thank the Lord for this night and this year, but also to praise the Lord. You remember the acronym for prayer acts, where you have adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. So you adore the Lord, you praise him, our Father uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, saying praises to God and declaring uh, how good he is and how powerful he is and worshiping him, adoring him. Contrition is asking for forgiveness for our sins. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, Jesus taught us to pray. Thanksgiving is what we've been talking about here tonight, and that's the focal point of this prayer time. After, uh, after a few more minutes, we'll be together praying, and our focus will be thanksgiving. And then also when we pray, uh, last but not least, we bring our requests to God, which is our supplications. And so tonight we're going to be focusing on the T of the acts of prayer, uh, thanksgiving. So... I'm going to break you up now into small groups. And again, please, if there's just two of you, find two more. Make sure there's at least three. Uh, Some people aren't going to want to pray. That's okay. You may want to let the people know that uh, ahead of time so we know how much time. It's um, about 11 after 7. So why don't we plan to pray for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, I'll come back up and we'll have Pete and Esther. And we will close out with a song right around 725, 720. Six. So let's go ahead and break up into prayer groups. Everyone at home, please pray at home along with us.